Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to King's Quest VI. Air today, gone tomorrow. We have completed the game uh, with the long path, which is the very happy ending, um, and the slightly less happy ending uh, by killing uh, Shamir. Uh, incidentally, uh, the maximum points you get for um, uh, when you kill Shamir is 227. Um, just thought I'd, you know, mention that. And this path, uh, we're at 142, and I don't think there's many points left. I don't remember exactly how many we'll get for it, but, uh, um, I think it's substantially less than 200. Or maybe it's a bit less than 200. Whatever. I I'm pretty sure it's less than 200. Um, but yeah, we are, uh, back here. This is, uh, what, around episode 14 or so? Um... We just gave the last, uh, the, the White Rose to Sing Sing, and Sing Sing did not reappear. So, uh, let's go back to the village. We've got uh, the lamp seller there again. We do have the hunter's lamp, which we will probably um, trade in. Even though it does absolutely nothing to do so, you do get a few more points. Good day, Prince Alexander. Okay, so, once again, we are going to use the Drink Me bottle and fake her death. You know, gotta always have to, al always gotta do the insurance scam. Alexander suddenly gets a very sneaky idea. I can't go on anymore. Without Kasima, I'd just rather not live. Prince Alex, no! It's true! The Wazir has beaten me. I give up. Poison is my last resort. Stop. I like that he's just like, stop. I am... Don't do it. No more. Yeah, he's like rubbing his, uh, you know, fingernails on his shirt. You know, the way they do. Stop. Don't do it. Oh, I got a little dirt under there. Let's, let's clean that. Oh no, you've, you've died, Alexander. Oh, what a waste. The poor young fool. Quick search his pockets! He's dead! He's dead! Wait until Abdul hears! He'll be so pleased! There's a spry old guy. It's a little bit like Crispin, actually, now that I think about it. I told you not to pop in like that! You can learn to knock like everybody else. Sorry, Master. I couldn't help myself. I have great news! Well, what is it? Prince Alexander is dead! He killed himself in despair over losing Kasima. <laughs> what? I feel like that voice Are does not positive? fit, Shamir. That young man has proven to be most devious. I saw the whole thing myself, Master. He was really and truly quite dead. <laughs> hmm. If what you say is true, it shall be most convenient. You've spent enough time on that little irritant. We must start thinking about the wedding. Anything, Master? Oh, I do love weddings. Well, we do want you to look your prettiest, don't we? Now, Shamir Shamazel, to the lamp with you. Prepare yourself as we discussed. Isn't there a stopper on there? Alexander's heart lurches to life in his chest. Once again, we've uh, learned that uh, Alexander has a robot Prince heart. Prince Alex, but you, you were... Sorry, friend. I was doing a little acting, I'm afraid. Ah, of course, the strange cloaked man. You are quite clever, and a bit too exciting for an old man. Also, your acting is terrible. Don't get a job in the theater. All right, we want to trade in our tinderbox, which I swear looks more like a lamp than Would a tinderbox. Would you tinder mind box. if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex, please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. 
I mean, it doesn't look that much like what it uh, looked like in our inventory, but, uh, you know, eh, whatever. Let's go ahead and that grab the... That uh, mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. Nightingale again? I believe I'll take it. Very good, Prince Alex. It is always a pleasure doing business with you. Enjoy the mechanical nightingale, and feel free to bring it back any time. Thank you. You know, I'm not sure which, uh... Which game I like more, uh, King's Quest V or VI? Um, VI definitely has some, uh, you know, quite a few things in its favor. Number one, actual professional voice actors. Um, but King's Quest V does have a really big world to it. Uh, I mean, compared... There's no reason to use that there. Compared to, uh... We're just doing this for points, by the way. Excuse me, Peddler, but I have an old lamp that might interest you. I mean, compared to this game, I mean, this is a, this is a tiny world. Ah, an old lamp. And what a nice traditional design, too. <laughs> Take your pick of my new lamps. I mean, we literally visit, like, the same you know, dozen screens um, a whole bunch of times. It's just kind of like, eh. is your new lamp. Of course, we only Good visit day. the screens in uh, King's Quest V once for the most part, with the exception of, like, the town. I don't know. Dread. Another dud. Do you really think someone would trade in a, uh, a lamp with a genie in it, old guy? Okay, so what we can do, um, and this is essentially what uh, um, prevents you from uh, trying to like mix paths or something like that uh, in order to break the game. Uh, an item that we lose uh, on the other path comes in handy on this path. A group of serving women approach the castle. Ah, woof! More serving women! The castle staff is certainly busy today! How come we didn't see any of these ladies in the, uh, um... Aye, <laughs> Gruff! Gotta move on there, wenches. There's plenty of work left to do before the wedding. Wenches? Well, that's just rude. Yes, Sergeant Gruff. Well, apparently one of them is really old. You're all color-coordinated, too. Those serving wenches are always late. Hmm. Late, eh? Let's get into uh, this little guard shack that uh, they, those guard dogs, clearly are uh, not paying any attention to at all. Taking his cue from the serving women he's seen enter the castle, Alexander decides to try a few alterations to make himself more acceptable to the guards. It's not like we saw. He ducks into the little hut to put on Beauty's clothes. It's not like we saw any of those ladies at all. Feeling a little foolish. Alexander slips Beauty's old slave clothes on over his own. A little foolish. Imagine if Cosima saw him like this. Well, here we go. You're awfully mannish there, you know. You there. Girl, you're late. Get a move on before the wazir sees you. Yes. <clears throat> Yes, sir. <laughs> the castle guards lock the main entrance doors behind Alexander. From the open door comes the clatter of pots and pans, yelled instructions, and other busy kitchen noises. Ah. Well, now we know what's over there. Girl, don't just stand there. There's a stack of silver almost to the ceiling that needs polishing for the wedding. Get a move on. Yes, sir. I'll definitely do that. That was Sing Sing vo I Sing Sing's voice. I can't get caught up in that mess. I'd never find Cosima. Oh yeah, 
take off your disguise. That seems... That seems smart, and especially right here out in the open uh, foyer. That seems dumb. Alright, well, let's go ahead and uh, take a, a quick save. And might as well just uh, place this. All right, well, let's see what happens if we go upstairs. Whoa, Alexander runs right into a guard dog patrol. Well, it's convenient that he was able to uh, hide in time. The ceiling features a vaulted dome that provides filtered sunlight to the upstairs hallway. Two powerfully built guard dogs patrol the upstairs hallway. The guard dogs patrol in a diverging pattern to ensure constant visual coverage of all parts of the hallway. You know, I feel like, uh, um, they just, uh, copied the, <laughs> the basement hallway in order to, uh, make this one. Hmm. I wonder. There are two thick wooden doors on the east wall. Large glazed urns stand like sentinels in the hallway. Alright, I think we actually want to be on the other side. Actually, we have not looked around here yet. A massive chandelier lights the large room. On the north wall is a set of large double doors. From his experience with the castle architecture, Alexander guesses that they lead to the throne room. There's a keyhole in one of the double doors. Hmm. There's a door on the east wall under the stairs. Keyhole, huh? Large urns stand formally near the staircases. They must earn a lot here. There's a door on the <laughs> west wall oh, under the stairs. Sorry. It's the door the waiter came through and probably leads to the kitchen. Well, let's go ahead and try that door. See what happens. Alexander decides to check out the door the waiter came through. No lunch is being served today. We're busy catering the wedding. But I'm hungry. Apparently, the kitchen is no place to be today. Oh, fine. What about up here? Uh-oh. Alexander's walked right into a couple of Hi. guard dogs. Hi! I, I brought sausages. Well, early guest. Are you on the bride or the groom's side? Uh, the, the, the bride's That's side. That's the foreigner the wazir warned us about. Grab him! Pilgrim? Ah, oh, shucks. Whee! You'll stay in here until we find out what the wazir wants to do with you. The guard dogs leave Alexander to his fate. Locking the door noisily behind them. And I uh, do not have the uh, skeleton. The sound key. of running footsteps echoes outside Alexander's cell. Really? What are you doing down here, Shrew? We've already got him locked up. Go back to your post upstairs. Uh, uh, the wazir wanted to know what all the commotion was about, and I told him about the intruder. He told me to post extra guards on this one. Extra guards, huh? So be it. Hmm. I think I'm not getting out of this one. Just as Alexander realizes that he has no possible means of escape, he hears the sound of wedding music playing somewhere in the castle. Oh, someone's getting married. Found the oh, crap. I'll never be able to stop the wedding now. Nope. Tis a noble thing to have a means of escape, and tis a far, far better thing to uh, to never get caught at all. Indeed. All right. So let's not do that. And instead, let's go up this side. By Cerebus Collar, I'll be glad when this wedding is over. Bay, I'm getting mighty tired of this patrol. It's wearied me to the bones. I couldn't agree with you more, Wolf. 
Who'd have thought we'd ever have to listen to Princess Cosima crying all day long? Pilgrim? be ordered to ignore it yet. Pilgrim? Something sticks in my craw about the whole thing. The Wazir says that the Princess is not herself. Says she's half mad with grief over her parents' death. I can see it. The poor might. But still. I agree. It seems cruel to lock her up when she's so heartbroken. Let her out in the fresh air, I say. It'll do her a world of good. Aye. Well, she insisted on the morning period, and it's up today. Thank the stars. It's too bad we couldn't find that nightingale of hers. The wazir says she's been pining for it. Humph. <laughs> if I had an ounce of luck, I'd have found it weeks ago. <sighs> Apparently luck is his dump stat. Not only would it cheer up the princess, but the reward the Wizir's offered for it would make me pretty happy, too, huh. doggone it. Aw, oh, well, our luck will definitely be out if the Wazir catches a snap in our jaws at our post. Sorry, Wolf. I'll keep my muzzle shut. Alright, let's take a look around. A marble statue of a guard dog in full regalia adorns the top of a pillar. There's an alcove recessed into the east wall of the hallway. Two guard dogs patrol the upstairs hallway. The guards are short but powerfully built, and they're equipped with strong jaws. The two look like natural fighters, but they don't look very bright. Well, that's just rude. Alexander can barely make out part of a doorway in the north hallway. A heavy wooden door leads off the hall. There's a keyhole in the door. A heavy wooden door leads off the hall. There's a keyhole in the door. Well, maybe we can uh, do something with that. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a quick save. And actually, I think we'll uh, call it a little bit early here. And uh, in the next episode, we will uh, see what we can do about uh, distracting these guards here who have... Uh, very kindly uh, talked while where we could he overhear them, giving us a little bit of information. See you next time, everyone.